Alrighty, let's wrap up section 3-2, log functions and their graph. This will be our third and final day. And we start out with the natural log function. Remember at the end of 3-1, we talked about the uh, natural base, base e, base e, you know, e to the x power. I said it was magical when it comes to calculus, and we know that exponentials have inverses. This magical uh, natural log base here, or uh, natural exponential base, has an inverse, which they call the natural log function. Now, if you look right here, I'm going to write a little bit bigger. We've got log base e of x, and this is so extra special, it gets a, its own special designation. Instead of the log log, log base e, we just call it the ln of x, the natural log of x. Uh, you could call it the natural log of x, you could call it the nat log, or like you're spelling it, you could just say the ln of x. And here we've got the graph. We've already seen the natural uh, exponential base there, base e. Oop, there we go. That's this one here I'm going over in red. We saw that in the 3-1 video. And we have this line here diagonally cutting through. That's y is equal to x. Remember, our, or our uh, inverses are reflections across that line, or we could just swap the points. And here's our natural log graph. It will go through 1, 0, like all other log graphs. And we've just reversed the points from the natural exponential. And you know, it just looks like in like a lot of other log graphs. But it does have its special properties, especially when it comes to calculus. All right, we're going to do a little calculator work here on my laptop calculator. Here's our log key, the common log. Here is the special key, the ln or the nat log key. So what we're going to have to do for this, let me move that out of the way, use a calculator to evaluate the function given by f of x is the natural log of x for each value of x. So we want 2, boom, and we're going to nat log it, and we get that decimal 0.6931. 0.6931. Uh, for b, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, take the nat log. Uh, negative 1.20, well, call that 40. Negative 1.204, the 3, 9 would round up. Uh, letter C, negative 1. 1, make it negative, nat log, boom, invalid input. Remember, just like any other log, we can only log positive numbers. If we've got the log of x, our domain would be that has to be a positive number. x must be greater than 0. Uh, negative 1 is not greater than 0, so we get the error message for part c. And now for letter d, well, 1 plus root 2. Let me see how I get it going to do 1 plus 2 square root equals, so I got that, now I'm going to natural log it, and I get 0 0.8814, 0 0.8814 for letter D. Just a little calculator button pushing. Uh, here we got properties of natural logs, very similar to the other properties of logs that we've already seen. I remember the log of 1 is equal to 0. Same thing with the natural log, because base e raised to what power would equal 1? Well, that'd have to be the 0 power. Uh, here we've got the ln of uh, e is equal to 1, because e to the first power would equal e. And that's kind of just a special case of this one here below. We've got the log, the natural log of e to the x. Well, just like squares and square roots, this natural log and the base e are going to cancel, and whatever that number is, is your final answer. So the log of e, or the natural log of e to the x is equal to x, and then here's sort of the inverse of that. Base e raised to the power natural log, just like squares and square roots, those are going to cancel, and that would be your final answer, whatever that number is. Again, those are our two inverse properties, and now we've got the good old one-to-one. -one. If the nat log of this is equal to the nat log of that, then this is equal to that. X is equal to Y. That's our one-to-one -one property. And I'm sure we're going to apply these here in an example, and there they are. Uh, well, this first one here, I see it's log of 1 over E, and that would be an E to the first. So let's rewrite that. I would bring the E up and make the exponent go to negative the natural log of e to the negative first. Now again, just like squares and square roots, these are going to cancel. 
So our final answer would be negative 1. Letter B. Base E raised to the natural log of 5. Uh, the E raised to the ln, just like squares and square roots, of these are going to cancel. So our answer is just 5. That's not a point 0.5. That looks like a decimal. Let me throw it in the garbage. There we go. Letter C. Ln of 1 over 3. Ln of 1 over 3. Well, we had a property. The log of 1 is always equal to 0. On the graph, that's our x-intercept. So that, oop, that was supposed to be a 3 down there, not a 0. Natural log of 1 turns into a 0 over 3. 0 divided by anything is, oh, is 0. Well, there's two ways we can look at this one. We've got 2 times the natural log of e. Well, one of our properties says that uh, this ln of e to the first, that's just going to equal 1. So these are going to cancel out and just turn into a 1. And 1 times 2 is 2. Uh, and I guess we haven't seen this yet, but we're going to see another way to solve this in the future. There's a very special property of logarithms that this number here can just be moved up and made into an exponent. So we could rewrite this as the ln of e to the second power. And then we would have our natural log and e cancel, just like squares and square roots. And our answer would again be 2. But that's for a later video. Here's some for you to try on your own. First batch, uh, pause the video, try these on your calculator, see what you get. Uh, in the next one, just use the properties of logs. You can get those exact answers without a calculator. All right, I hope you pause the video. Let me get my pen here. Uh, for the first one here, letter A, your calculator should have had a negative 4.6052, if that went well. For part B, you should have got a 1.3863. Part C, root 3 plus 2, and then hit the natural log key, you would get a 1.3170. And then for part D, if you did everything right, you should have got an error or invalid input. Uh, because the square root of 3 is a little bit bigger than 2, and then uh, or a little bit less than 2, and a little bit less than 2 minus 2 is negative, so because that's going to be negative, we are going to get an error message. Oops, get out of there we go. Ah. So this first one, natural log of e to the one-third power, ln and e are going to cancel. Answer is just one-third. Oops. Letter B, 5 times natural log of 1. Well, we have a property, this nat log of 1, that turns into a 0. 0 times 5 is 0. In part C, we've got a fraction, but then we've got the natural log of e to the first. And the natural log and e are going to cancel, so that's going to be a 1 times 3 fourths. That's equal to 3 fourths. And the last one we've got looks like an inverse property going on there. We've got a base of e. We've got an exponent natural log. Those are inverses of each other. They're going to cancel. And our final answer there would just be 7. All right, and here they're asking us in example 10 to find the domain of the function. So we've got, there's always something going on after the log here. So remember, we can only log positive numbers. And what also we're going to do here, this is also sort of how we find the vertical asymptote. We've got what we're logging, x minus 2. In this case, it says find the domain. So we would set that greater than 0 because we can only log positive stuff. And we would add 2 to both sides. So x must be greater than 2. So this, again, would be our domain. And if I want to turn that into the vertical asymptote, I would just change that greater than into an equals. If x is exactly equal to 2, we're at a vertical asymptote that we're never allowed to touch. So 2 would be our VA. The domain would be everything to the right of it. Part B, find the domain. 
we're logging the quantity 2 minus x, we're going to set that greater than 0. Be careful solving for this x. One way to go about it would be to subtract 2 from both sides. So now it's negative x is greater than negative 2. If we divide both sides by negative 1, don't forget the property to reverse the inequality. Dividing or multiplying by a negative, the inequality reverses. So here, two, or x must be less than 2. And again, if we want to turn that into the vertical asymptote, x would equal 2 is the VA, and x must be less than 2 would be the domain. Now, an alternate way to get that answer without having to worry about flipping the inequality would be to add x to both sides. So we've got 2, we've got greater than, now we add x, x is positive over here. And I just, I prefer my variables on the left, so what I would do is write x on the left and 2 here. But remember, the little alligator is hungry, and it's going to eat whatever's bigger. Up here, the alligator was eating the 2. Down here, the little alligator is still going to be eating the 2. The last one does have a little twist on here, the ln of x squared. Well, now think about it. x squared, whatever we're logging, that x squared, must be greater than 0. And think about it. We can just about put anything in there, right? Positive numbers, if we square it, they're positive. Negative numbers, if we square a negative number, it becomes positive. So there's only one number that we cannot plug into this function, and that would be exactly 0 x cannot equal 0. That's the only number that would mess us up. And that's also exactly where the vertical asymptote is. x cannot equal 0 because x equals 0 is the VA, the vertical asymptote. All right, uh, I checkpoint here for you. Quick one here, and I th we've got one more example to discuss. So find the domain of that. Pause the video. Pause the video. Did you pause it? x plus 3 must be positive, greater than 0, never or equal to. Subtract 3 from both sides. x must be greater than a negative 3. And you know, we could test it. What if a uh, negative 2? We could put a negative 2 in there. Negative 2 plus 3 would be a positive 1, and we could still log that. All right, one application of this type stuff, uh, we use math to model things we can observe in the real world to gain further insight into what's going on. And this is a neat one with a human memory model. Uh, we had students participating in a psych experiment. They attended some lectures on a subject and then were given a test. Every month for a year after the test, the students were retested to see how much material they remembered. Now think about it. If you uh, take a class and then you have a test, as the months go by, if you retest, I'm sure your scores are not going to get higher unless you're studying on your own. As time goes by, you forget stuff and your grade should, you figure, go downhill. And uh, they took the student data, they fed it to a memory model, and it happened to fit a log model. So it says here the average scores of the group were given by the human memory model, f of t, t for time, is 75 minus 6 times the natural log of t plus 1, where t is the number of months after the exam. So it says here, what was the average score of the original exam at t is 0? So I'm going to take this function and just put in a 0 for t. 75 minus 6, natural log of. I'd plug in 0 for t, so that would be 0 plus 1 or 1. Remember our properties. The natural log of 1 is 0, so that 0 times this 6 wipes out that term. 75 minus 0 is 75. So the students did some, uh, went to some lectures, they took a test, the average score was a 75. Now it says here in part B, what was the score after two more months? So I'm just going to back this up here. And instead of plugging in a 0 for t, we're going to have 2 plus 1. And that would become the log of 3. We would uh, take that log, we would multiply by 6 and subtract that from 75. So again, right up here, originally the initial scores were 75. Now, after two months, we're down to 68.4%. So the grades went down, as to be expected. People are forgetting stuff. So that was two months after the test. We put a two in there. Now we're gonna make that six months after the test. 
So now it's going to be the log of quantity 6 plus 1. So that'll turn into a 7. We log it times 6, subtract from 75. Part C, we're now down to 63.32%. 63.3. As time goes by, people are going to forget more and more. And again, the, the best way to model that is using a log function. Oop, and that's the end. It should say there we're going to do some odd problems in class, and we'll do a little web assigned for homework. And uh, I'll see you in class. I hope this video helped.